here we are. Flat Lodge Victorian Village. Filled with 50 shops and scenes and over 52,000 genuine artifacts from the Victorian era. We will explore each one and discover its story and what part it played in history. For the virtual walk around, check out the link in the description. The Victorian Village is a life-size adventure which was the creation and love child of Audrey Hale. Her desire to preserve the past for future generations resulted in the creation of this unique experience. Audrey hand sketched the facades of every building among the labyrinth of streets, fabricating a powerful memory to journey back in time. The only thing you cannot capture in this video is the smell. A smell that gives you the very sensation that you have stepped back in time onto the cobbled streets of London 1800s. A smell that I guess I would say is very similar to what you would experience as the Industrial Revolution and the start of a new journey. The first part of our adventure takes us through upper middle class living. Let's check it out. The nursery. Children of wealthy families were not raised like you and I. Victorian parents had a more formal attitude towards child rearing. Children were raised by hired staff, such as nannies. Children would also spend most of their time and even eat in the nursery. The nursery was not only a place to play, but learn. It's from the Victorian teaching that some of you may have come across the saying children should be seen and not heard, as this was the expected manner of the time. Upper class bathing. Victorian bathrooms for the upper class were quite extravagant for the time. Being wealthy enough to have a hot water supply in your home would be a gentleman's boast at any dinner party. Having a hot water system did ease the maid's workload a little, if it's simply easier to turn on a tap rather than lug heavy buckets of hot water from the kitchen where it had been boiled on the range stovetop. The drawing room. Both women and men lived very separate lives during the Victorian period. For mostly the rich and upper class husbands and wives would often only spend breakfast and dinner together. Women of the household would spend their days together. This included young girls from the age of 12 years and up who were seen as young adults. Women would spend their time sewing, reading, playing music, much like we see in this scene. doctor. This scene shows an elderly Victorian lady, well, in days gone by the family doctor would visit you at home, treating anything from a broken arm to influenza, coupled with his gladstone bag, which we can see placed at the end of the bed. The poor of the Victorian era would not have been able to afford to see a doctor. Most poor would have used their chemist as their doctor, many of which chemists held no medical knowledge at all. Maids living. Staff of a wealthy Victorian family often lived in a single room, and in many cases a single room shared by others. In this scene we can see the drastic switch from rich to poor, where the maid is only a single bed and the most basic clothing which moves us along nicely. Let's take a look at the Victorian living of the poor and the obvious divide. And here we are, a world away from upper class living into poverty. Living the life of the poor. Most low income Victorians who are the poor often work together as a family. 
usually only being able to get by on the bare minimum, families would usually live in single rooms, or at the very most, two, which served as their living room, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, all rolled into one. The single fire we see here would have served as both oven and wood. The working poor. To get by, men would often head out cap in hand daily, seeking any level of manual labour. Wives and younger children would often clean the laundry of their wealthier counterparts for a few small coins. Whereas their teenage daughter, usually between the ages of 14 to 16, would have most likely taken the role of a scullery maid of their wealthy neighbours, and would have considered herself lucky for even obtaining such a sought after job. Doctor of the Poor The local chemist was the usual choice for the Doctor of the Poor. Most chemists had very small amount to no medical knowledge at all during early Victorian practice. The cholera outbreak of the 1830s saw the boom of cure-alls. These were pills or liquids that claimed to cure a number of things. Most of these products were deadly, leading to poisoning and death. And this leads us into the streets and shops of the Victorian village. In part two, we take a look at the different shops, bars and hotels of the Victorian village, discovering their history and how the Flamboys came to own them. Please remember to like and subscribe for future content such as Britain and the Blitz, the Concord, and World War II memorabilia and much, much more. Thank you for watching. Until next time.